morning, ladies and gents. Uh, welcome back. Another session of Come Learn With Me. This is your CIO, Greg Silverman, speaking. And uh, we rate all the articles that we curate on our fairly large uh, social network and social platforms. And then we do a Come Learn With Me for some of the, the most liked and most shared articles. And this is one that percolated to the top. It's actually one that I've been very interested in for some time, thinking of all the kind of reckless lending, let's say, that's gone on in China and wondering when that will come to bear. So it seems like we've got a bit of action going on. So let's waste no further time. Let's get in. The damage could be huge. Chinese banks tumble, swept up in mortgage non-payment scandals as borrowers revolt. And this is from July 15, so just under a month old, but still, nonetheless, um, you all were interested in it, and so am I. So on Friday, shares of China's banks extended their slide to a two-year low amid fears widespread mortgage non-payment will spark contagion within the banking sector. Even the local banking and insurance regulator said it will maintain continuity and stability of financing policies for the real estate sector, even after. So what's this? Chinese lenders fell to two-year loan property contagion fees. Fears. China Central Television said on its WeChat page that the regulator will guide financial institutions to participate in risk disposals based on market conditions, i.e. fire sales. After research, Researcher China Real Estate Information Corp reported that home buyers had stopped mortgage payments on at least 100 projects in more than 50 cities as of Wednesday, fearing concerns that the quality of home loans is in rapid decline and could culminate in a 2007 light credit housing bubble blowout. I think much bigger, bigger size. Still, at Bloomberg Markets Live, reporter Yi Zi writes, the grassroots movement of Chinese home buyers boycotting mortgage payments isn't exactly akin to the U.S. subprime crisis of 2008. That said, no matter what Beijing does to address the latest chapters in China's housing crisis drama, banks are likely to share the burden. In the wake of a surging number of home buyers who refuse to pay mortgages on construction projects that have stalled, China's banking regulators said Thursday they are coordinating with other agencies to support local governments in working to ensure the delivery of housing units. Separately, Bloomberg reported reported that policymakers had held emergency meetings with banks to discuss the issue and concern that it may worsen. Hmm. The boycotts raise the risk of mortgage defaults, a new set of trouble for banks. They're already squeezed by exposure to ailing property developers. Mortgages make up almost 20% of total bank loans outstanding, amounting to about 39 trillion yuan, 5.8 trillion dollars. That's trillion dollars. That's a lot. And um, this comes on the back of some of those construction behemoths like Evergrande, I think, defaulting on their bond issue. So this is kind of the contagion happening here. In a rather panicked note from Morgan Stanley economist Xi Ping Chai, available to pro subscribers, he addressed the topic of widespread mortgage non-payment and writes that we estimate 188 million square meters, 1.7 million units, are at risk. We expect local governments will be urged to help completion, but a national bazooka solution remains difficult in the So one thing the Chinese do have going for them is their ability to turn a central economy around so they can really, by edict, force money into that space. But forcing good money off the bed is never a good solution because the chickens will always come home to rest, right? He warns non-linearity is the key to watch. To others, however, such as Z, this is an exaggeration. According to the Bloomberg reporter, it's reasonable to argue that this is unlikely, the start of something as bad as the US subprime crisis. Unlike lending to developers, mortgages have been regarded as the safest asset on bank balance sheets. As Betty Wang, an economist at ANZ, pointed out, mortgage defaults have been rare and rising home prices over the years have increased the value of banks' collateral. Some data. The average non-performing mortgage loan ratio of the six largest banks, which account for 68% of China's total home loans, was only 0.38% in 21, compared with an NPL of 2.73% for developers into Wang's calculations, okay? Of course, all this assumes that the current mortgage boycott movement can be quickly nipped in the bud. If not, the potential damage could be huge. Namura's economist Lu Ting and, the, and his colleagues estimated about 4.4 trillion yuan worth of mortgages made between the end of 2020 and March 2020 may be tied to those home projects that have been stalled or slowly being built. Understandably, Chinese banks have gotten hammered in recent days. The CSI bank index fell more than 4%. This would be uh, the price to book ratio. Uh, over the past two days, to the lowest point since March 2020, the price to book ratio has dropped to an all time low point since 
existing investors believe a significant part of the banking system's assets are impaired. Uh, what's, the, what's the blue line? The MSCI or country world. Oh, okay. At the same time, the CSR 300 financials index slipped as much as 1.2% on Friday and is set for an 11th session of declines. Of course, the worse it gets, the more likely Beijing will have no choice but to unleash a powerful re-leveraging bazooka, even if it has to do some kicking and screaming. Hmm. Talk about inflation, guys. <laughs> Indeed, as Z correctly concludes, the government is likely to step in sooner rather than later as the mortgage boycott starts to undermine social stability. Either banks have to chip in to provide cheap funds for developers to complete projects, or they have to allow home buyers to delay their payments. Neither is an attractive option. What is the worst case scenario? Here we go back to the non-linearity kicking in case suggested by Morgan Stanley. Home buyer confidence weakens further from a low starting point, leading to further deterioration in property sales. Force more developers, even relatively strong ones today, to suspend unfinished projects, furthering the downtrend. In the meantime, housing prices may continue to fall, exacerbating the downward spiral. Further, the stress in the housing sector could spread to the broader economy, given the extensive intersector linkages while being magnified by the financial system. Yes, expo a huge exposure by banks, as we've discussed. Chinese banks' contagion. In short, a self-reinforcing down cascade, which ends in either a historical crash or the world's largest asset, a state bailout. Here are the two most likely policy responses, according to Morgan Stanley, damage control. Local governments will likely be called upon to mobilize resources on a by-project basis, possibly with the help of SOEs and LGFVs, I'm not sure what those stand for, to kickstart suspended projects signaling to the public that housing completion is the overarching priority. SOE developers may be encouraged to conduct m and activities taking over stalled projects. Reigning in systemic risk beyond the near term, policymakers will likely need to send a clear and strong signal that they stand ready to be the rescue of the last resort to rein in systemic risk or systematic risk. Plausible moves include more meaningful demand stimulus, more explicit guarantees, or quite quality developers, or less likely, a tarp like program. A massive fire hose of liquidity and credit is about to be unleashed. <laughs> oh, that's non inflationary, right? More inflation coming. One final, one final though, just given the size of it, I mean, in China, you know, any inflationary move there is going to have a, a spillover effect globally, I think, on inflation. One final, though, similar to crypto lenders, which generously handed out 20% DeFi interest until it all blew up spectacularly in one giant cross link Ponzi scheme. So, China's 5% plus mortgage rates have been extremely lucrative business for banks. It's now payback time. Well, there you go, guys. Again, something we've been tracking for some time is this uh, I would call it a slow motion crash in the Chinese real estate market and then ultimately the Chinese financial market through the banks, which are exposed to mortgage as well. That um, session will come learn with me. Please subscribe and like. We always learn something new reading this with you, and we always love to hear your comments uh, and get your follows. So uh, take a look at some of the links below. You'll see uh, how we can help you grow your company, restructure your company, strategize for your company. Uh, we have a CPA arm. We have an investment division, uh, and we have a CFO division, so we can help on all fronts. Get hold of me. Thanks for joining, guys. Greg Silverman, out for now.